In the meantime, you tonight at 10 o'clock, KHQA meteorologist Nick Stewart is back from storm chasing. He joins us here in the studio to give us a look at a research project called Twirl. Nick? Yeah, Rich, tornadoes are not well understood, as you know, and they remain a great unknown in the field of meteorology. One group of tornado researchers is trying to answer many questions. For the last two weeks, I joined along with these researchers on a journey across the central U.S. Tonight, we take a look at Twirl and the science of the project. It's May in the central U.S., prime time for severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. Hundreds of storm chasers from across the country and the world come to witness the power of Mother Nature, but there's a special team called the Center for Severe Weather Research out on the hunt. I got it. The beginning of May means the start of a project called Twirl. We're gonna hop in here, play around with pot in a little bit. To put it simply, this team of researchers wants to better understand the wind speeds in tornadoes using an array of different instruments. Well, what we're trying to find out is what the wind speeds are down low where people live. The Doppler on wheels can only see what's happening above the trees. Well, people don't live above the trees. The U.S. sees hundreds of rotating storms called supercells every year. It's these storms that can lead to tornadoes. But a strong storm does not always cause a strong tornado. You need to understand why most threatening looking supercells don't make tornadoes. And why even more of those threatening looking supercells just make weak tornadoes, insignificant tornadoes. But a few of these supercells do have that potential to make damaging, large tornadoes that can destroy homes and that can hurt and kill people. The team hopes to better understand more about tornadoes, something that is not a very easy task. It is nearly impossible to get hit by a tornado when you're trying. But last year, we had two successful days where we got pods in tornadoes. So we know that it can be done. Pod O, you see the paint is kind of ripped off. Yeah. That was actually in a uh, very violent tornado last year. Specially designed 130 pound tornado pods are used to collect wind speed, temperature, humidity, and pressure samples of tornadoes, while a specially designed mobile weather radar called the Doppler on Wheels can collect high resolution radar images of the same tornado. So understanding how strong the winds are that cause that damage, how the changing wind directions, how the length of time that the wind impacts those structures affects the damage that happens to those structures is very important both for engineering better structures for informing better building codes and enforcement of building codes in the future. After a quiet start to the storm season, prospects for severe weather begin increasing starting May 8th in Colorado. The Center for Severe Weather Research leaves their home base in Boulder for their initial target of Lyman, 100 miles southeast. The Doppler on Wheels, or Dow, a mobile weather radar, gets in place to start scanning the skies and the funnel begins to drop from the storm. Under the guidance of Dr. Joshua Warman inside the Dow, the scout team start getting into position. Scouts carry tornado pods capable of measuring important weather information inside tornadoes. These have instruments on them that we place in the path of tornadoes. We have two anemometers. We have a blade anemometer and a sonic anemometer. We also have pressure, temperature, relative humidity readings here as well. And we also have a GPS so we know where we place them and we can go back and retrieve them. If the storm does drop a tornado, Dr. Wormitt's plan will then go into action. The Dow begins scanning the tornado, working to determine a path. Once the path is determined, that information is relayed to the scout teams, which then drop the tornado pods in a path every 100 meters. Luck plays a big role on whether we get to the right place at the right time. And the Dow's can vector us in and give us a timeline and say, OK, at 106th and Saddle Road, it'll be there in three minutes. You need to get there. Well, that doesn't give us a whole lot of time, and depending upon the road conditions and where the tornado is moving, we may or may not get there in time. It's a combination of the Dow scans and the tornado pods that will help collect groundbreaking new data that will ultimately help save lives. Our goal is to make a three-dimensional map of that tornado, really a four-dimensional map, watching that tornado evolve in time and relate it to the damage that occurs to trees, telephone poles, and unfortunately, houses and other buildings that may be in its path. Yeah, it's about five or six kilometers from us. It's not looking for us about radar. Back out near Lyman, the storm begins moving northeast, 
of a twirl team gets out ahead of the storm once again. Radar trends show that the storm is weakening and that the storm is becoming more outflow dominant, meaning that rain-cooled air from the storm is rushing out, cutting off the inflow of warm, moist air needed to keep the storm strong. Most of the team begins heading south, calling off the chase for the day. However, the Scout 3 team decides to stick with it for a bit longer. Oh boy. The storm begins dropping large hailstones, a sign of a strengthening updraft. And it's not only hail-covered roads that he must worry about, as his cow tries to make a break for it. Unfortunately for the Scout 3 team, the tornado potential falls once again, and it's time to call out the chase for the day, concluding the first mission of 2017. A long drive lies ahead for the Twill research team on May 9th. The 300-mile truck takes them across multiple state borders before ending up in eastern New Mexico. The forecast calls for multiple supercells capable of very large hail and a few tornadoes. After leaving Lamar, Colorado and stopping in Vega, Texas, the team sets course for Clovis, New Mexico. Almost to Clovis, the Storm Prediction Center issues a tornado watch, which means the conditions are ripe for the development of tornadoes. Primary threats, a few tornadoes, with a couple of intense tornadoes, possible scattered large hail, up to three inches. The Doppler on wheels, or Dow, begins scanning a rapidly developing supercell, supercells of the storms that spawn tornadoes. We're in northeastern New Mexico right now. What you're looking at behind me is the Dow, the Doppler on wheels. It is scanning this storm to see what's happening. It's looking for things like rotation. One thing that you're seeing on your screen right now, right here, this is your rain-free base. It's a really strong indication that it's like a nice updraft with the storm. Over on the other side of your screen, that's the downdraft. That's where all the heavy rain and the hail is falling. The Dow is the brainchild of Dr. Joshua Warman of the Center for Severe Weather Research, a project he started after graduating college. Uh, and started designing a radar, the first Dow, that could get up close to storms, that would boot up in seconds, already be working while we were driving, um, that could take the punishment of all this, um, but also get really, really fine radi uh, fine scale data inside the tornadoes. Inside the Dow is mission control for the project, multiple displays showing live radar, maps, and GPS positions of both the scouts and pods. This allows the team to watch in real time how the storm is evolving and allows who's in charge to direct the three scout vehicles to deploy those tornado pods. It's a strategy game, you know, it's mother nature and she's kind of fickle sometimes. The key here is to find out what is going on each second. So these are sort of our black box reporters, if you will, leading on up and documenting the event. The Dow is showing that the storm is showing signs of broad rotation developing in the cell. The team is playing a waiting game, waiting for the storm to come to them. A wall cloud begins forming with the storm. Tornadoes often form from these wall clouds, but it's not able to produce a tornado as it approaches the Texas border now north of Clovis. The decision is then made to head south to Sudan, Texas, where a new storm is forming. This storm is significantly stronger than the other. Scout 3 positions itself real close to the rotating wall cloud. A very quick tornado drops out in front of us. However, it was too quick to deploy the pods out in front of the tornado. The storm continues to spin after sunset before it finally weakens. The team calls it for a night after two strong supercells and one brief tornado. As Twirl enters its second week of missions, so far they've had limited success. The three scout vehicles have yet to deploy a tornado pod, and the Doppler on wheels has only collected data on one good tornado. Most days that I go out on chasing missions, I fail. Either the storms don't make tornadoes, or they make short-lived tornadoes, or they make tornadoes that don't cross roads where we need them to cross. Prospects for tornadoes take them out once again from their home base in Boulder to the Texas Panhandle. Rotating storms called supercells are forecast near McLean, and it's these supercells that are capable of producing tornadoes. Thunderstorms begin forming and the Doppler on wheels start scanning, looking for signs of rotation. Meanwhile, the scout vehicles start preparing their tornado pods for a potential intercept opportunity. Well, it's going to tornado right here. Scout 3 is in perfect position as the funnel begins to drop with the storm. A funnel needs to make contact with the ground before it's considered a tornado. All right, there it is. After tantalizing chasers for several minutes, the storm plants the first tornado of the day. There it is. Tornado. 
But while seeing a tornado is great for the team, the real mission is to collect data from it. If I'm out just chasing recreationally, and let's say I'm out with my family looking at pretty storms, sure, seeing a tornado, I'm happy, everybody's happy, the kids are happy. For me and my, for my team to be happy, and for the scientific analysis effort to be happy, it just takes a lot more things to go right. And that includes the scout vehicle getting into the path of a tornado to drop data collection instruments called tornado pods. It's now a race to get out ahead of the tornado and find a road where it will cross. Unfortunately for the team, the tornado lifts before they can get the pods in the path. But this storm is not done yet. It continues into Oklahoma, approaching the town of Elk City. The storm becomes a high precipitation supercell, meaning that rain starts to hide the tornado from the team. However, the Dow does not need to see the tornado to collect amazing data. And hidden in the rain lies a beast. Like the eye of a hurricane, the tornado can be seen on radar. The Dow measures winds of 195 miles per hour just 600 feet above the ground. Unfortunately, pods were not able to be put in the path so the ground winds are not known. So that's the idea of having the pods out there. But we also want to correlate that to what the Dow's are saying above the trees. The damage caused by tornadoes is exactly what Twirl is trying to better understand how the buildings behind me can become ripped apart, how pieces of roof like this become projectiles. One person is confirmed dead between 10 and 12 injured, and at least 75 structures destroyed or damaged. The only thing I was thinking is, for us not to, me and my wife, not to get sucked out because kids would have been next. The following day, the research team does a damage survey around Elk City. Seeing how the different buildings fell apart will still give them scientific information. This afternoon and this evening, we're going to keep on going with this moderate to high risk of severe thunderstorms. That's a four or a five on a scale of one to five, so it doesn't get any higher than that. It's the best looking severe weather day for the season and the first high risk on the plane since 2012. The twirl team is busy making sure everything is ready for what may be a hectic day of chasing. Water, hail and wind is not very forgiving. Things are constantly breaking. Every single day things are breaking. We need people who are good technicians. We have people who are good with computers and networking because this isn't just chasing with a video camera. Every morning, the tornado pods are tested to make sure they are working, looking to collect data that has not been collected before, which may help build better buildings. Looking at damage, it's indirect. We can infer winds from the damage, but we don't know what those winds really are exactly. It's time to roll out. Multiple rotating storms called supercells are taking shape west of Woodward. In order to keep up with the quick moving storms, the team has to core punch. Core punch means driving through the area of heaviest rainfall and hail to get to the other side. It's a gamble that can have consequences. Yeah, I'm that. We do have uh, windshield damage. Twirl vehicles often take a beating on missions, from hail dents to broken windshields. Right now we're in the midst of a hail core, this supercell that's forming in far northwestern Oklahoma. Hail is basically rain droplets that get lofted up by a very strong updraft. And the longer that the updraft keeps them up in the atmosphere, the bigger the stones can get. Later in the afternoon, the storm is maturing, showing signs of stronger rotation. Any circulation would be heavily wrapped in rain, and that's when the Dow confirms a tornado has touched down. Just a few hundred yards away, a fairly large tornado is seen just north of me lurking in the rain. Being this up close and personal with the tornado is the only way to actually see it. The rest of the twirl team does not have a visual. Thankfully, this tornado turns away from the town of Alva and harmlessly dissipates in the field. Due to the erratic movement and the danger of the rain, the scout teams did not deploy pods in this tornado. And as the sun sets, week two of chasing comes to a close for the team, but they'll be back out in the chase again soon. Are you kidding me? I love it out here. I mean, would I want to be working right now versus doing this? I mean, this to me is what I live for. Out in rural Oklahoma, a monument stands in tribute to three lives taken too soon. To Tim and Paul Samaras, 
and Carl Young, three tornado researchers killed by the El Reno tornado in 2013. It stands in testament to the dangers of tornado research. These researchers put their lives on the line to help the public, an effort to help better understand the tornadoes that terrorize the plains.